paranormal dog. This event that happened to my dad was one of the two most terrifying events that happened to him paranormal-wise, and I'll tell it from his perspective. I was around 17 or 18 years old, and I was at my in-law's house. It was after my wedding with your mom. It was a civil wedding. This was before we got married at the church. I was with my wife and mother-in-law, talking about my plans of getting to the United States to work so I could build a house for me and her daughter. It was around 7 p.m. at night, and we continued to talk while my in-law made coffee for us to drink while we chatted of other things. Time goes by really fast when you're having fun or doing something you find interesting. It was around 9 or 10 p.m. at night when my in-law said, You should start heading out already before it gets too late and you won't want to leave. It's okay, I can wait longer, or at least until Rafa gets back so you two wouldn't be alone in the house. Besides, my sister went to the city and won't be back in three days, so she gave me her key so I can stay at her place. I'll just have to walk two blocks instead of twelve. She then replied with, All right then, you can stay a bit longer. We continued to talk. Eventually, we started to hear the rain fall, and through the window the flash of lightning came in. The storm had caused a power outage, and the house got dark, and would light up with the flashes of lightning. My in-law then said, You should get going now before the storm gets worse, while lighting up candles for light. I know, I was thinking the same thing I said. I said my goodbyes and stepped into the rain. I tried my best to cover myself with the jacket I had, and proceeded to walk to my sister's house in pitch darkness. I was walking past the house at the end of the first block, and then, and then I heard the loud sound of lightning, and saw a white flash in front of me. Before this happened, I remember the story a person told me about the house at the end of the block. The guy told me that when he would walk near that house, a Rottweiler would appear coming out from a tree from that house. The guy told me that the dog would follow him from a distance, and he knew that it was something bad and the guy would try to avoid that house, but the dog, the dog would always manage to follow him. While I stood in shock due to the flash of the lightning, the story of the dog flashed through my head in an instant, and as my eyes cleared, I saw the dog right in front of me, exactly two feet in front of me. All this happened in seconds, it was as if the flash made me think of the dog, and me thinking of it was me calling to it or attracting it. It was similar to when you're passing a certain spot, and you remember something that happened and smirk or smile because it made you feel happy. However, it was an entirely different feeling. I got tense, and my body ran cold. My fight or flight response started to kick in, and I chose, I chose to fight. I was filled with adrenaline as I reached for the ground while I kept my eyes on the dog. I picked up a decent sized rock from the road. Back then, the roads in Mexico or in our town were made of rocks and people would often trip on the loose rocks. The rock I had in my hand was the size of a brick. I brought it up past my head and I was about to throw it. When my hand was going down, I started to speak. B -b -b bitch you're not a dog, you're the devil. My voice staggered, but when I finished my sentence, I had already let go of the rock and hit the dog. It yelped, it yelped and ran off and went into the direction of the house. I started to run in the direction of my sister's house, hoping I wasn't being followed. I wasn't. I got to my sister's house and continued opening the door. Once inside, my adrenaline high started to die down, and I went into the spare room that I was going to stay in. I got on the bed and got rid of my wet clothes and covered myself with sheets because I did not want to look for the blankets in the dark house with no power. Although I was cold, I did not want to get out and said, Now you fucking marble should not start to roll while I'm trying to sleep. The room I was in was haunted. My sister told me that, at a certain time, you could hear marbles rolling and colliding with each other, making that noise you could only know if you play or ever played with marbles. 
I think it's similar to a pebble hitting a window or something. But that's a different story altogether. I continue to go to my in-law's house, however, I did not stay past 10pm at night. I learned that you should never be outside in the dark, especially, especially if you're alone. You don't know who or what is following behind you. Ghost Dogs? This story took place during the mid-90s. At the time, I was about 4-5 to five years old and lived in South Wales, UK. For anyone who's never been, it's a beautiful country. There's mountains and forests everywhere and I was really lucky as my back garden led straight into one. Back then, I was very adventurous and it was a time when kids could just wander the streets. Everyone used to play outside back then, and everybody knew everybody. My friend Michael and I were always in the woods making dens, exploring and playing games. Hide and seek, mob and fox and hounds were very common games at the time too, so I'd been in there 100 times at least. I mean looking back on it, it was quite dangerous, you see. As you entered the woods, it was a big open space, but there was a huge drop at the end. We used to call it a clift, and probably seemed bigger than it was back then, but I know it's about a 30 foot drop. On the side of the cliff were various trees and stones that we always saw the older kids climbing down. You see, it wasn't like a 90 degree drop, it was sloped, like a hill. Wales has tons of mountains, so I guess that's not too surprising. One day, Michael and I were alone. He was a year older than me, and we were best friends. We even had the same surname, but weren't related. He even lived in my old flat. While playing, we started to hear dogs barking extremely loudly. Now, it would frighten me, but I love animals, and back then, I would have done anything to cuddle a dog. We always had cats, which of course are better, but still, we... We, we never had a dog, so we decided to try and climb the path down the cliff. It was surprisingly easy. I guess we were always outside and we had seen it done many, many times before. After reaching the bottom, the atmosphere of the woods seemed to change. It was thick with stingy nettles and trees which seemed to grow infinitely. The sun was blocked out much more down here so it was dark and colder, but I can still hear the dogs and so we, we continued on. After what seemed like half an hour, but which was probably 10 minutes, we came across a shed. It looked really, really old and there was a swing set outside it. As we looked at it, I noticed that the barking had stopped. I wondered why a child swing set of all things would be here. The shed I could understand, but a swing set in the middle of nowhere surrounded by stingy nettles? Being the curious kid that I was, I opened the door. Michael didn't seem worried either. That was until we looked inside. Staring back at us were two big Rottweilers. They snarled and leapt up towards us. Michael and I ran faster than we've ever ran before. We could hear them behind us. The barking was different to before. It was it was aggressive, almost angry-like, like we disturbed them. I looked back every so often, but I couldn't see them, just hear them. At the time, I didn't really think anything of it. Now I realize that there's no way we could have outran those dogs. They should have caught up to us. We finally reached the base of the cliff and found it much harder to climb up than it had been to climb down. They could feel my heart pounding, just waiting to feel their teeth grab my legs and pull me back down. The barking was getting louder and louder and louder. It seemed like it seemed like they were right there, but still we couldn't see them. Atop the cliff, we found a small tree and began to climb. We could hear the dogs at the base, but there was nothing there. Eventually, the barking stopped, but we were too scared to move. Then, snap, 
The branch we'd been sitting on gave way and Michael fell backwards. I landed on top of him, and then the heavy branch on top of me. We couldn't talk, and found it very hard to breathe. That was the first time I heard the phrase, The wind knocked out of you, by my mom, who very quickly found and cried to, forgetting about the dogs. A few days later, I mentioned it to my brother. He was around nine, nine years old, and to me, he was really tough. He wanted me to show him where the shed was, and reluctantly, I did. If anyone could keep me safe, it was him. But when we got there, it was gone. The shed, the swing, the dogs, but there was a dry patch where the shed and swings had been. So, I knew those were there. But my question is, were the dogs real? If they were, why couldn't we, we see them? Well, was there a shed and swing set there? Who was it? Why did they take it away? I haven't been down there since, and honestly, I don't think I want to. Anyways, thanks for reading. I love your channel. My dog was a good, good dog. Hi everyone. So, three years ago in May in 2013, my dog and best friend George was put down. He had battled with cancer and had lost feeling from his waist down, so he was in pretty bad shape. I was in the room with the vet as he euthanized him and I held his paw as he breathed his last. George was very loyal, yet somewhat dumb at times. Yellow lab and I adored him. We live in a two-story house with our chairs cut into three sections with small flat parts dividing them. Almost every night, George, while he was still physically able to, would sleep on the platform closest to the bottom floor. After I had gone to bed, I would hear him bound up the stairs and then immediately settle on the floor. Sometimes he would climb the entire staircase and sit at my doorway looking at me. He waited there until I raised my hand to him, waved at him and said, Hey George! He would wag his tail and then leave, as if he was worried about me and wanted to check in on me. After he died, I was a wreck. Even though I was a teenager, George was still my first animal. I got him when I was seven years old. He was the first animal I ever had, and even more so, the first animal of mine I'd ever seen die firsthand. It really wrecked my life for a good while, and I didn't really know how to feel about it. Well, the night he died, we had a little funeral service, and I helped bury him outside of our house. I was really dumbfounded as to what was really going on, and went to bed soon after that. I cried in bed because I missed him so, so much. About half an hour after I got into bed, I heard the familiar bounding up the stairs that George used to make. I was at first a little startled, but then it made me feel peaceful. The heavy footsteps ran up the stairs and to my doorway, but stopped there at once I knew it was George. I sat up in bed and looked at my doorway and said, Hey George! I'm okay. A few moments after that, it sounded as if the footsteps led George back down the stairs. I cried a little bit more, not out of sadness, but because even in death, my best friend still wanted to make sure that I was okay. It happened a few more times after that, but has not yet happened too often since then. I mean, I guess, I guess the point in this post was to tell you guys that not every ghost or spirit you see is bad out there. There are still those from the other side who want to make sure you are okay. Yes, I believe that there are evil spirits who wish to do us harm, but there are just as many good spirits who wish to keep us safe. Have a great night, guys. P.S. I, I miss you, George.